Tokia, Yanaleo, Mi Yan Kekan San, Mi Wele Pana is Sona Pitoki Pona. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Dan3, and today I want to teach you about Toki Pona. Now listen up, a portion of this lesson is going to be in Toki Pona, so get ready. And if you're already skilled in Toki Pona, skip to this time code to listen in. Today, we're having a mini lesson about expression, thinking about what it means for some thing, object, idea, to be a word in Toki Pona. Now, a lot of analysis in English gets stuck on the idea that a given thing always has some most appropriate head word to describe it, and once that word is found, that's it. Now, having helped a lot of learners over the past two years, I find it's often because the learner themselves is new to the idea of expressing things in another language. They're reaching for a singular word or phrase that captures the same idea as the word they want to translate in their original language, which isn't really how Tokipona, or translation itself, works at all. We're going to challenge that idea, and these learners, to see Tokipona in a new way. And we're going to do it by looking at a particularly strange creature, and finding a variety of ways to describe it. Now, you might have noticed, I'm not in front of my chalkboard. And this creature here, and here, is why. In English, this is a jellyfish. And the jellyfish is one of the creatures that ever. From its name alone, you might be tempted to call it Kala in Tokipona. And that wouldn't be so bad. If you and a friend were both looking at the jellyfish, you'd probably agree that Kala is a great and easy way to get across what this creature is. And of course, that's a very obvious reason to use the word Kala, even if you've never seen one before in your life. It's moving around in the water. But that doesn't mean that Kala is the only or even the best way to refer to the jellyfish. So we're going to play a game about it. Let's imagine that you're looking at the jellyfish for the very first time, and you have to describe it to your friend on the phone. They can't see it either. Uh, and for bonus points, they haven't seen a jellyfish before either. So where do you even start? Well, the first thing to realize is that this task is hard even in English and just about any other language. Pretty much all communication depends upon having and describing common experiences in order to successfully get an idea from your brain to your listener's brain. Most languages have the benefit of having more words, more specific ideas that are easily accessed, but it turns out we can still apply this same strategy to Toki Pona. So we'll start here by looking at the jellyfish ourselves and describing its features. Then. We'll describe them in relation to other things we know in order to communicate the idea of the creature to our friend on the phone. This is where the Tokipona starts. Ona li yo e lawa sike. Taso lawa ona li telo mutela. Sina ken lukin e insa ona. E io lon monsi ona. Mi kenala pilin e ona tan ni. Ona li lon telo. Taso lukin la. Ona li ko tawa pilin. Pilin mi la, mi luka e ona la, ona li kama lili sama ko. Ona li yo e linja mute mute lon anpa pilawa ona. Nili sama linja pan mute tawa lukin. Taso, ona ale li weka pona tan ona ale la, ona li kama ala wan. Ken la, telo ona en ko ona li pone en ni kin. Kin la, Linya ona li suli mute a tawa lawa ona. Ona li suli sama luka ale yan. Taso ona li lili tawa sielo yan. Ona li lasso sama telo la ona li ken len lon suno lili. Hmm. Taso mi sona ala en ni. Ona li tawa ala tawa tan wile. Lukin la ona li ken ala tawa tan wile. Ona li tawa sama telo. Tan tawa telo. Ken la ona li wawa ala li kenala tawa tan wile tan ni. Ona li wawa ala la telo li tawa e ona. Ni ale la mi wile kepekin nimi kala tawa ona. Taso ona li ko li linya a li telo a. Kin la ona li tawa wile ala. Ni la ona li ko telo tawa mi. Ko telo o sui pona. Here's a rough translation for you, in case you couldn't catch all of that just yet. And if you don't want spoilers, skip to this time code to get to the summary of the lesson. The shape of its head is circular, 
but so watery that you could see inside of it and the things behind it. I can't feel it because it's in the water, but to my eyes, it's squishy and gooey. I feel like if I felt it, it would squish and become smaller, like goop. It has many tentacles, many lines, underneath its head, and they are similar to noodles in appearance. But they're distant enough from one another that they don't not, and maybe the water and the squishiness of it could help this too. Its tentacles are very, very large compared to its head. In fact, they're large compared to a person's arm, but they're small compared to a person's body. Its shade of blue is so similar to the water, it can be hidden when there's little light. Now, I don't know this. Can it move because it wants to? To my eyes, it can't really move how it wants. It moves like water does, because the water is moving. Maybe, because it's not strong, the water moves it. And so, because of all of this, I want to use the word kala. But it's squishy and stringy and watery. It also doesn't really move on its own. Because of this, it's squishy water to me. Big good squishy water. So the big takeaway here is that words in Tokipona are descriptive. Not names, as in sounds assigned to things, but explanations of what the thing is, how it is, why it is, and what it does in various contexts. There's no one most appropriate word as a head. There may be one or even a few that will be better understood by your listener, but by trying to use only one or a handful of words, or by trying to assign one best head noun, you actually limit your ability to express things in Tokipona. That limited view might lead you to call the jellyfish a kala, or maybe a kala ko or a kala linea, but you can get so much more creative. Think about words as being descriptive, not names, not constant ways to refer to the thing, and then use that description to build ideas in your listener's mind. As we saw with the jellyfish, there are a dozen and more appropriate ways to describe it many of which give you valid head nouns to use all on their own. But more importantly, each and every one of these draws on experiences the listener has had, and they relate different parts of the jellyfish to those experiences. That way, the listener can, understanding those experiences, get a pretty good idea of what's being referred to. After all, they've probably seen things they can see through, they've probably felt gooey things before like mud, They've probably seen or eaten noodles, and they've definitely seen water push things around because water's strong, and this creature is not. When it comes down to it, the only thing that makes a word valid to use is whether your listener understands what you mean when you use it. Now, the reason I put together this mini lesson is because a group of friends and I came to this very aquarium a few days ago, and we had a long conversation, all in Tokipona, about this exact jellyfish, or four of them. We didn't really come up with one correct way to talk about the jellyfish. More, we posed the question, what is it? Ni li kala ala kala. Ni li semi. And the conversation spiraled from there in a huge number of directions and touching on different ideas. Some silly, like the noodles, and some serious, like the fact that it can't really move around however it wants to. Can you think of any more ways to refer to the jellyfish? Post them down in the comment section. By the way, my lesson on la and also my lesson on asking questions are on the way. Apologies about the long delay. My workflow got knocked around all sorts of ways between January and March, and I only just recently got back on track. Thank you so much to Yantekinoe for the thumbnail of this video, and thank you all so much for learning. Have a good one.